this is installment three of my recent trip to Europe. Now I'm in Prague, the capital of the Czech Republic. And as I said at the end of the second installment, Prague is a culture paradise, with ballets, classical music and operas available in almost every church, almost every evening and afternoon. The look and the feel of the city is great, with lots to see and do, and the buildings are the product of great architecture. This is the famous Charles Bridge over the Vltava River, which was commissioned by King Charles IV in 1357 and was completed in the early 1400s. And as if out of that era, there was an organ grinder plying his talent on the bridge. This is the Prague astronomical clock. It is a medieval astronomical clock and it was first installed in 1410, making it the oldest one still working in the world. There is an hourly clockwork show called The Walk of the Apostles, in which there are figures of the apostles and other moving sculptures, notably a figure of death represented by a skeleton, and they strike the time on an hourly basis. Prague Castle has classical concerts on most afternoons in summer, and the one I saw featured a piano, a viola, and this lady flautist. At the State Opera House, I saw the Ballet Swan Lake. At the fabulous Spanish Synagogue, I saw yet another concert, which just happened to feature the same lady flautist that I saw at the Prague Castle. This is the inside of the synagogue, and this is what you see when you look up at the central dome. A short train trip just out of Prague is the 13th and 14th century town of Kutnahora. The Sedlec Ossuary in Kutnahora is a small Roman Catholic chapel located beneath the cemetery in the Church of All Saints. The ossuary is estimated to contain the skeletons of between 40,000 and 70,000 people whose bones have, in many cases, been artistically arranged to form decorations and furnishings for the chapel. The ossuary is amongst the most visited tourist attractions in the Czech Republic, attracting over 200,000 visitors on an annual basis. After Prague, I was on the train again, and this time I was on my way to Vienna and more great architecture and cultural events. First of all, I am off to the stunning Vienna State Opera House. The Vienna State Opera House is one of the busiest opera houses in the world, producing 50 to 60 operas per year and 10 ballet productions in approximately 300 performances. It is quite common to find a different opera being produced each day of the week. As such, it employs over 1,000 people and its annual operating budget is around 100 million euros. The opera company operates a repertory system. More than 50 productions are staged every year and there is a performance nearly every day for 10 months of the year. The first night that I went there, the opera Barber of Sevilla was playing. I went there again for the second time and I saw the best version of the ballet Capilla that I have ever seen and my seat only cost about $11. Also famous in Vienna is the Prater Ferris wheel. It is situated in the Volksprater and that's like a lunar park but a bit bigger. The Ferris wheel you may remember was featured in the film The Third Man about Harry Lyme. It is a 64.75 metre tall Ferris wheel. It is one of Vienna's most popular tourist attractions and symbolises the district as well as the city for many people. Constructed in 1897, 
It was the world's tallest Ferris wheel from 1920 until 1985. The Mozart Museum is situated in Vienna and this is a photo of the foyer area of the Mozart Museum. After Vienna, I am once again on the train and going to the twin cities of Buda and Pest, which makes up the word Budapest, the capital of Hungary. Without doubt, you have to go to the castle and the citadel, and you go there to get photos of the magnificent river Danube, which is wide and fast flowing. I was really getting around fast on this trip. That's because it is so easy with the train and bus system in Europe. Now I'm off to Dubrovnik in Croatia via the capital Zagreb and a change of trains in the seaside town of Split. The Croatian people are very nice and friendly and in my opinion they are about the friendliest and most helpful in all of Europe. Dubrovnik is a very attractive city, especially the walled area known as the Old Town. It is definitely a cruise ship destination for Mediterranean cruisers. Dubrovnik is on the Adriatic Sea in the region of Dalmatia and was the most prominent tourist destination in the Mediterranean. And in 1979, it was listed by UNESCO as a World Heritage Site. After a few days in Dubrovnik, I went back to Split to spend a couple of days there. And I went down to the beach area and there was some sort of handball competition going on in the shallow waters of the beach. There were teams and there were five in a team and they hit this ball type of thing to each other with their hand and try to keep it going for as long as they can without it hitting the water. They dive for it in the very shallow water and try to hit it as they are diving. I think points are awarded for the number of hits and how spectacular the dives are and how long it stays in the air. Each team gets about 15 minutes to show their skills. I think it was an all split or all Croatian competition because there were medals and cups given out at the end of the competition. And then there was singing and fun all around. We have to leave the fun there now because our time's up and I have to close off this third instalment of my recent trip to Europe. Next week will be the final segment in this trip. You've been watching this on Eastern Newsbeat brought to you by ERA TV.